Hello and welcome to your 62nd, I believe it is, either 62nd or 63rd SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and tonight I want to talk to you about stored procedures and then I'll show you how to create a stored procedure. So, uh, stored procedures are a set of SQL statements, one or more, typically grouped together to perform a specific routine. Stored procedures can be created in any user-defined database and system database except the resource database. They are comparable to multi-statement functions, but they boast features and flexibilities that are not possible within functions. Some of the benefits of using stored procedures are as follows. Okay, Number one, they offer improved performance because of compiled code. Two, they are easy to maintain because changes are central instead of in line with code. And three, since database operations can be performed inside the stored procedures, they provide a strong level of security. Instead of access being granted to the underlying object, permission can be granted only to the stored procedure. Essentially, stored procedures create a level of abstraction for permissions instead of the user being granted select, insert, update, or delete rights. The user can be granted execute rights to a stored procedure. All right, so, and then uh, SQL Server has four types. We have user-defined, system, temporary, and extended user-defined. Um, the extended user-defined stored procedures have been replaced with common language runtime CLR procedures. If you need more info on that, you could just Google it or you could use the uh, uh, SQL Server books online that comes with SQL Server. Okay, and then below this, I have some sample syntax here for a stored procedure. Um, when creating a stored procedure similar to a function, you're able to set several options. However, only the procedure underscore name and the actual SQL underscore statements are required. Okay, so why don't we take a look at how to do this now. So let's go over and create a stored procedure. Let's go over here to Management Studio and let's connect to an instance and then we're going to go over to our Object Explorer and just like in the last couple tutorials we're going to Databases, we're going to AdventureWorks 2012 then we're going to the Programmability folder then we're going to look for Stored Procedures and we're going to right click and you guessed it, New Stored Procedures. Now, just like we saw, it auto populates uh, as a starting point but just as in the last couple, I already have prepared something. So what we're going to do is go new query. And then we're going to go back to this guy. And then we're going below here. And here's my code that I need. Gonna copy that. Go back over here. Paste it in. And you go ahead and copy that down yourself. So in this code that you see right here. A simple stored procedure has been created that does not expect any parameters and contains a single T-SQL statement. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute this. Alright, commands completed successfully. Perfect. Now, let's go back over here to our Object Explorer. And now we want to expand the stored procedures folder. And now we're looking for bbo.purchase order information. You see it right here. Okay, cool. Very good. Now you know how to create yourself a stored procedure. And in my next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you uh, how to execute. Using the execute keyword, you'll be executing the stored procedures and redefining result sets. What else? I Parameterizing stored procedures is coming up on my list. How to alter a stored procedure to add parameters. And I'm not sure from there. I think, oh, dropping stored procedures, removing a stored procedure. And after that, we'll be done with stored procedures and we'll be moving on to data manipulation triggers. So that's what's coming up in the next few tutorials. I hope you're enjoying these. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.